exclusive contract with Felu Novel Network Novel. World War II Shit Stirring Stick I inherit the Beiyang Mountains and Rivers traveling through parallel worlds, Yuan Datu, the cheap father who originally wanted to proclaim himself emperor, accidentally heard Yuan Keting's voice, and the wheels of history began to change. Since then, Yuan Keting, as a minor ruler, began to make bold changes to the national conditions of the Great Xiao. Developing the education industry, vigorously developing infrastructure construction, promoting the use of fertilizers and pesticides, and constructing water conservancy projects while strengthening and developing the country's strength, we should also train a new type of military. After 10 o'clock, Yuan Datu, the chief father, passed away due to illness, and Yuan Keting inherited the land of Beiyang. A giant dragon appears in the east of the world. The Jialong fleet is besieging the east, and roaring jet fighters are roaring on Britain and the Iron Tower. The Kirin I tank shattered the ice and snow world, and the trembling polar bear was dismembered. The Shenfeng crossed the ocean with two kicks, tearing apart the arms of the eagle sauce and causing the arrogant eagle sauce to fall into the sky. With the power of one country, Yuan Keting led the Xia to take off the world once again. Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. Chapter 1 Cheap Dad Yuan Dadu Knows I Am a Traverse You are listening at NovelFull.audio Parallel World in 1926, the capital of the Great Xia Kingdom was the capital city. As the cold air moves southward, the temperature gradually decreases. However, on this day, the capital was heavily guarded and exceptionally solemn. The mansion of the consul of the Great Xia Kingdom is surrounded by wreaths and white cloth, with a high dot quality golden silk Nanmu coffin placed inside. The golden Nanmu used to build this coffin is a precious wood unique to the Great Xia Kingdom. Representative species include Nanmu, commonly known as Jinnan. Nanmu is a tall tree with a height of over 30 meters and a straight trunk. Nanmu wood can emit a fragrance, with a straight and fine texture that is not easily deformed or cracked. It is an excellent material for building and making high dot end furniture. In history, Nanmu was dedicated to the architecture and furniture of royal palaces and a few temples. This kind of wood feels like touching a baby's skin, warm and delicate, as smooth as jade, and can also emit strands of delicate fragrance, making one feel relaxed and happy. The coffin of the emperor and the furniture in the royal family are mostly made of this type of wood, so this wood is also known as imperial wood. Lying in the golden silk Nanmu coffin was Yuan Datu, the consul of the Great Xia Kingdom and the commander in chief of the Beiyang army, who had died of uremia. Yuan Datu, who almost chose to declare himself emperor in 1919 but decisively gave up this opportunity when he stepped on the door, finally became stubborn before his death. The emperor didn't succeed. The emperor's coffin was actually used. Xiao Shuai, what Lao Shui means is that after he settles down, you will immediately vote through parliamentary elections and become the highest ruler of our great Xia country. Simultaneously assuming the position of commander-in-chief of the Beiyang army. Officially inheriting Beiyang. The speaker was Wang Shirzhen, the right-hand man of Yuan Datu and the head of the Beiyang Three Heroes. Don't worry. The supreme ruler is just an empty name. Some people say that we and our father want to turn the great Xia kingdom into a family and a world. Foolish insights. Climbing onto the stage, the wood is beautiful in the forest, and the wind will surely destroy it. It's better to find a puppet. With military power in hand, political power emerges from the barrel of a gun. Yuan Ketao's son and successor to the Beiyang group, Yuan Qian, refused without hesitation. Wang Shizhen looked at Yuan Qian in astonishment, facing the young man in his twenties who had gradually taken control of the political situation and military since ten years ago as the deputy commander of the Beiyang army and a government official. He dare not speak too much. This is the little prince recognized by the entire Beiyang group and confirmed by the commander-in-chief of the Beiyang army, Yuan Datu 
to inherit his position early on. Of course, this identity alone is not enough to gain the loyalty of the entire Beiyang group. The reason why Yuan Qian was able to silence Wang Shizhen like a cicada and dare not question it is still due to his abilities over the years. As an elder of the Beiyang group, Wang Shizhen faced the pressure of Yuan Qian. Far greater than facing the pressure of his father Yuan Datu. Yes, Marshal. Representatives of warlords and ambassadors from all over the country attending this funeral today. You and Duan Chirue, Feng Guizhang and others should handle it, and leave us with the list of candidates to succeed as the highest consul. In a few days, we'll give you an answer. Yuan Qian rubbed his temples and continued, If there's nothing else, you can leave. My humble duty, obey me. With the sound of the door closing, Yuan Qian, dressed in mourning clothes, forced a bitter smile and said, Dad, you know we're walkers, so don't say a word in advance. You must tell us before you pass away. At this moment, there was only Yuan Qian in the hall, so he revealed the secret hidden in his heart without any worries. That's right, Yuan Qian is a traveler. He is not a person from this parallel world, but a super talented person from the 21st century who graduated from the University of National Science and Technology of China and studied history, military, and management. Later, due to a confidential operation, he sacrificed himself in the end. Yuan Ku thought he was dead, but he didn't expect to come to this parallel world that is extremely close in history but obviously not at the same time. And from the beginning of his journey to this world, Yuan Qian changed the trajectory of historical progress. Yuan Datu, who was supposed to proclaim himself emperor in 1916 but ultimately betrayed his family and died of uremia, miraculously survived for ten years. At first, Yuan Qian thought it was the result of the butterfly effect triggered by his arrival in this world. Until today. Yuan Qian finally understood everything. It turned out that Yuan Dadu could hear his own voice. He knew from the beginning that his son Yuan Qian was a traveler. No wonder after you made up your mind, you suddenly changed your mind the next day. No wonder since you gave up restoring the monarchy, you have intentionally or unintentionally started preparing to hand over power and let us lead the military, education, industry, agriculture, infrastructure construction within the Beiyang sphere of influence. Originally, Yuan Datu had already known everything. It's no wonder that for someone like Yuan Datu, the most worrying thing is only the successor, after all, he is as strong as the second emperor after the first emperor, the son of Emperor Xian of Han, the son of Emperor Zhao Lai of Han, and the son of Liu Bei without exception, they are all black sheep. There is a biological son who can understand the world situation, has his own system, first dot class abilities, and the key is to be as good as a fake. Of course Yuan Datu will use it again. The key is that Yuan Datu can still hear the voice of his talented son and know Yuan Qian's nature and thoughts. What better successor than this? But at this time, Yuan Qian, who was in the morning hall, could not stop roast about his black belly and cheap dad. The reason why Yuan Datu only told Yuan Qian about this matter before his death is because he became addicted to listening to Yuan Qian's voice. This imperial power can be used by others, even one's own son is not spared. What a dark belly! The black belly belongs to the black belly, and Yuan Datu has complete trust in Yuan Qian. Otherwise, in these ten years, Yuan Datu would not have let Yuan Qian meddle, and he would have been protecting Yuan Qian. It is precisely Yuan Datu's ten years of protection that have enabled the smooth handover of military and political power of the Beiyang group. And the three heroes of Beiyang, such as Wang Shizhen, Duan Chirue, and Feng Guizhang, were willing to bow down and pay homage to Yuan Qian. I also witnessed Yuan Qian's prowess during these ten years. Over the past decade, Yuan Qian reformed the internal affairs, appointed people based on merit, and avoided the outbreak of domestic wars as a minor ruler. It has formulated two five-year plans. Just these two five-year plans have brought about earth-shattering changes in the control area of Beiyang Group. Similar to the situation in another world, 
the Southern Army controls most of the area south of the Yangtze River. However, due to the complex internal composition of the artillery faction and the prevalence of various religions, the southern region controlled by the artillery faction split into several factions. Like the Gui, Dian, and Yu styles of course, there are also regions such as Sichuan and Sichuan, where warlords of all sizes are fighting fiercely, and regions such as Sichuan, Chongqing, Guizhou, and Hunan that are being contested by various forces. As for the four provinces of Feng Tian, they were occupied by Zhang bandits who acted against the Beiyang group. The northwest region was under the control of the Northwest Ma family army, which had been in turmoil since the previous dynasty, while the western part of Jin fell into the hands of Yan Lao Kai. The Beiyang group is undoubtedly the strongest warlord in the Great Xia Kingdom, but it is still too far and far from the major powers. Fortunately, after these two five-dot-year plans, the strength of Beiyang Group underwent a tremendous transformation. Catch up with Western powers, polar bear countries, and eastern countries. Yuan Qian believed that if another war broke out with the eastern devils at this time, he would definitely be able to put these little devils on the ground for friction. Of course. In time. The land bitten off by the polar bear country from the Great Xia country will also be returned with interest. However, with the rapid development of the Great Xia Kingdom, Yuan Qian's ambition is no longer limited to this. In 1926, if we continue to develop according to the original trajectory of history, a big war will sweep across the world. Due to the emergence of Yuan Qian, this war is likely to break out prematurely. Prior to this, Yuan Qian had been cooperating with Hans and exchanging information. Since war is inevitable, why not continue this battle and let the Great Xia Kingdom step on the remains of the Sunset Empire, the Polar Bear Kingdom, and the Eagle Sauce Kingdom? What about achieving the position of world hegemon? There is an old saying that goes. If you don't make a name for yourself, you will be amazed, if you don't fly, you will be soaring. Yuan Qian endured for so many years and temporarily gave up the goal of unifying the Great Xia Kingdom. Isn't it just to make the descendants of Yan and Huang, and the Great Xia Kingdom stand on the top of the world again? Now that Yuan Datu has passed away, he has fully controlled the military and political power of the Beiyang group, and the two five-dot-year plans have brought great development to Beiyang's strength. The strategy of concealing oneself may no longer be able to deceive people. Since that's the case, simply disrupt the entire world situation. Chapter 2 Beiyang after the 2 to 5 year plan, too strong. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Yuan Qian has such confidence, of course, not because he boasted on his own. Ultimately, it was because the 2 5 dot year plans brought great development to the control area of the Beiyang army. In terms of people's livelihood, since the implementation of the new currency in Beiyang. Over the past decade, the average salary level of employees reached 637 yuan. This is an increase of 188.8% compared to 10 years ago, and the income of farmers has increased by nearly 135%. The average consumption level of the people has increased by 134.2%. In terms of basic construction, Various departments have completed a total investment of 55 billion yuan, added fixed assets of 46 billion yuan, and constructed more than 10,000 industrial and mining construction projects within 10 years. Automobile, power generation equipment, aircraft, new machine tools, heavy dot duty machinery, electrolytic aluminum, precision instruments, plastics, steel, etc. They were all built from scratch. This has changed the incomplete industrial situation in Dashia and increased the strength of its basic industry. Agricultural production has also achieved significant development. Within 10 years, the total agricultural output value in the Beiyang controlled area of Dashia country has achieved the original plan by 201%. The grain production reached 390 billion caddies, the cotton production reached 32.8 million tons, and the cultivated land area was expanded to 28.67 million mu. The cultivated land area in the Beiyang controlled area reached 674.5 million mu. 
After the end of the second five-year plan, the railway mileage in the Beiyang controlled area reached 9,836 kilometers. The total length of highways open to traffic has reached over 150,000 kilometers. In terms of industrial development, the raw coal in the Beiyang controlled area is 93.23 million tons, with a power generation of 9.3 billion kilowatt hours, steel production of 4.35 million tons, and oil production of 8.93 million tons. Wait. Wait. These data may not seem very shocking, but combined with the little devils, even by the end of World War II. It can be understood that the steel production has not yet exceeded 10 million tons. In 1926, Shao Gizi's steel production was 1.736 million tons. This data is far inferior to the current Beiyang. Of course, as it is only two five-year plans. At present, Yuan Qian still has a full understanding of the national conditions of Dashia. Compared to the Little Devils, although their oil and steel catch up. But compared to other major powers, there is still a significant gap. For example, Eagle Sauce. In 1897, the steel production of Eagle Sauce country reached a level of 7.272 million tons, and in 1925 it reached 46.122 million tons. As for the current situation, the production of other important oil-producing regions in the world is around 15 million tons for polar bears, 5.98 million tons for Mexico, 5.16 million tons for the Middle East, and 6 million tons for Dutch East India. The oil reserves on the land of Dacia Kingdom may not be too much, but 8.93 million tons are not enough to support Yuan Qian's ambition. So even though Beiyang is currently facing various warlords, it has the strength to achieve the ultimate unification of the Great Xia Kingdom. But considering that the great powers will not sit idly by to unify the Great Xia Kingdom and replicate the glory of the empire. In addition, the current international situation is turbulent, and the signs of war are becoming increasingly apparent. If effective economic, financial, and resource resources are allocated to the civil war at this time, it will inevitably delay the development pace of the Great Xia Kingdom. This is not conducive to the goal of Dacia Kingdom dominating the world in the future. So for the sake of development. Yuan Qian understands that it is necessary to develop and strengthen himself, after all, the Great Xia Kingdom is not yet the most powerful country in the world. There are intelligent people in this world, but they are able to develop and judge according to established plans and the world situation. Only in a pattern that has not been seen in a century can we achieve the takeoff of the Divine Dragon. In terms of education, we will gradually promote compulsory primary education and nine-dot-year compulsory education, and firmly implement rural literacy policies. And the excellent young teachers' rotation to the countryside movement. At present, the number of citizens in the area we control is 250 million. This is a huge population, and the most important thing for future development is talent. The use and operation of machines. You need to be able to read. The development of high.end technology requires highly specialized talents. In the field of education, what we need to do is to spare no effort. Do you understand? Although Yuan Qian was not prepared to sit in the highest governing position of the Beiyang government from the beginning, this does not mean that Yuan Qian has defended his power. The normal operation of all institutions in Beiyang requires the signature and nodding consent of Yuan Qian. Currently standing in front of Yuan Qian is Kai Yuan Pei, who was recruited from Peking University to serve as the Minister of Education. Professional people, do professional things. This is Yuan Qian's creed. Yes, Marshal. Kai Yuan Pei nodded and said. Although Kai Yuan Pei came from the artillery faction, he witnessed Yuan Qian's outstanding talent. And over the years, after the rapid development of the Beiyang controlled region, he immediately realized that Yuan Qian was the one who could lead the country to take off. Therefore, Kai Yuan Pei has always fulfilled Yuan Qian's arrangements without any discount. You should know these years. Kai Yuan Pei, who
who personally participated in the development of Beiyang education, witnessed it firsthand. In this era, the population of the entire Dashia country was 450 million people, however, the illiteracy rate is over 90%. There are too few people who can read. This is also an important reason for the significant backwardness of the development of Dashia kingdom in modern times. You should know that in 1619, the Germanic people announced the compulsory education system. According to its compulsory education regulations, all minors, regardless of gender or social status, must receive education. As for the Dongyang Little Devils, their education reform also included primary education, secondary education, higher education, vocational education, and women's education. Children of the Little Devils aged 6 to 14 must receive modern compulsory education. So much so that by the 35th year of the Meiji era, the literacy rate of its citizens had reached 90%. The rapid rise of the Germanic Empire and the Eastern powers was inseparable from their education. So even in extremely tight financial situations, Yuan Qin has never overlooked the investment in education. After the second five-year plan, a full decade of education provided a large number of new generations with high-dot-quality education. Within the Beiyang-controlled area, the illiteracy rate has decreased to around 3% to 5%. Even some older people are actively literate, literate individuals can pay less taxes, the education industry is in full swing in the entire Beiyang controlled area. With a large number of educated youth entering various factories, production efficiency has also been greatly improved. Even the development of agriculture has benefited greatly. Of course. The military has also benefited greatly from the development of education. Firstly, most of the grassroots to senior officers in the Beiyang Army graduated from military academies. At present, Yuan Qin serves as the commander.in.chief of the Beiyang Army. Under its command, there is a million strong army. In order to develop, Yuan Qin is committed to building elite forces, these soldiers are all one in a million. Except for the regular army. There are also organizations such as reserves and militias. In other words, as long as Yuan Qin thinks. He can expand the general's team several times in a short period of time. At present, the Beiyang army is also gathering famous generals. Under Yuan Qin. Jiang Bailey served as the general's staff officer. Zhang Xiaozhuan, Kai Yi, and General Wu Peifu are the commanders of the army corps by Chengxi, Guo Songling, and Shuiyu hold the rank of Major General Du Lumin. Song Xilian, and Huang Baitao hold the rank of Major General due to the emergence of Yuan Qin, the fate of these top generals naturally changed. Three generations of generals, old, middle-aged, and young, gathered together. After ten years of development, the Beiyang army has gained strong strength. Therefore, even after the death of Yuan Datu, the highest executive of the Beiyang government, the entire Beiyang group has not experienced any major unrest. Just after Yuan Qin signed the document and Kai Yuan Pei left. General Jiang Bailey, chief of staff of the operations department, appeared in front of Yuan Keting. Marshal. I have three things to report to you. Firstly, the southern army is taking oath in Guangdong province and preparing to launch an attack towards the north. The second is that the Eastern Kingdom has increased its troops by 150,000 on the Goryeo Peninsula, and the Polar Bear Kingdom has increased its troops by 200,000 on the grasslands in the Far East. The third point is that the 300,000 strong army of the Fengtian army is also sharpening their swords. It seems like everyone. It's all because of the passing of the Marshal, I'm so restless. After speaking, the relevant intelligence was handed over to Yuan Qin. Ha! There is a saying that goes. When the country is in doubt, they are good at timing. But this time. They must be blind. Yuan Qin glanced at the intelligence and sneered. Let's go. Go and take a look at our military camp. Yuan Qin stood up, picked up a military coat, and walked out. Chapter 3 the Claws of Polar Bears and Little Devils 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Yuan Qian took the lead, followed closely by Jiang Bailey, the chief of staff of the staff department. The two of them quickly got into the car, and Yuan Qian opened the car door and sat in a spacious sedan, where Jiang Bailey immediately sat. The car the two of them were sitting in was produced by the first domestic car company of the Beiyang government, Red Star Motors, and was also the world's first bulletproof car. Since Yuan Qian took over Yuan Dadu's stall and began to lead the development of the Great Xia Kingdom through a small governance approach. He quickly reached an intention to cooperate with the Germanic Empire. After all, Yuan Qian, who was well aware of the shamelessness of certain countries, knew how the Xia, as a victorious country after World War I, was betrayed by foreign powers. The peace agreement that achieves the status of a victorious country but receives treatment from a defeated country is a blatant humiliation. So it is reasonable to exchange ideas with the Germanic Empire. After absorbing and digesting all the technology of a German empire company called Mercedes-Benz. At present, Red Star Automobile Company has been able to complete the localization of all components, and this small sedan called Red Star I Bulletproof Sedan is Red Star Automobile Company's proud work. The Red Star I Bulletproof Sedan has six wheels, two in the front and four in the back. These wheels are not ordinary, but are made of specially designed metal wire mesh and special materials inside the wheels. In order to achieve bulletproof effect, this sedan is equipped with thick bulletproof armor. Its body is made of 4 mm thick steel plate, the windshield is 50 mm thick, the rear seat cushion backrest is equipped with bulletproof steel plate, and the floor is also thickened to 4.5 mm. The vehicle weighs over 5 tons and is equipped with a 7,655 mL inline 8-cylinder engine, which can generate 200 horsepower. Sitting in this small car, the safety can be imagined. Of course, bulletproof cars are specifically designed for important figures like Yuan Qian to use. As for ordinary cars, their sales are quite high. However, at present, a motorcycle company under Red Star Motors is doing very well in business. After all, the lives of ordinary people in the Great Xia Kingdom have not yet reached the point where they can easily buy expensive cars. A group of companies, represented by Red Star Motors, produce military motorcycles that are favored by the military. At present, a large dot-scale military motorcycle purchased by the military is called the Lifan R-71. The R-71 is equipped with a 500 ml dual-cylinder gasoline air dot-cooled engine, with a maximum power of 27 horsepower and a maximum driving speed of 95 km per hour. The maximum load capacity of the vehicle is 500 kg, with off-dot-road tires 4.5 inches wide and 16 inches in diameter. The vehicle is also equipped with mudguards, leaving enough space for the installation of anti-dot-skid chains. The vehicle is 15 cm above the ground. The design of this motorcycle was also prepared for the Blitzkrieg proposed by Yuan Qian and the staff. It can set up machine guns, carry three fully armed soldiers to the front line quickly, and cover the infantry's advance. It also has strong off-dot-road capabilities, fast travel speed, and flexible mobility. Riding in the Red Star I sedan, Yuan Qian looked at the scenery outside the window and suddenly said, How is Li Yuanhong? This person has a cowardly personality, but his adaptability and inclusiveness are still good. Being a puppet is a technical job, he should be able to obediently listen. Yuan Qian seemed to be talking to himself, but also seemed to be talking to Jiang Bailey. This left Jiang Bailey momentarily stunned. After a while, Jiang Bailey finally choked out a sentence. Young Marshal, soldiers are not suitable for discussing political affairs. This is what you said. Upon hearing Jiang Bailey's words, Yuan Qian smiled and said, You remember well. Marshal. There's one more thing, I remember quite well too. Before his death, the marshal kept talking about your marriage. If the marshal gets married, it can also give a reassuring pill to the Beiyang costume. As soon as he said this, Yuan Qian felt a headache and said, Say it again, 
say it again. Business matters. Even in positions like Yuan Qian, getting married is still a headache. Anyway, Yuan Qian still inherited Beiyang. And the more than 2,000 years of feudal dynasty history in the Great Xia Kingdom, some traditional concepts cannot be rid of for a while. Actually, there's not just Yuan Dadu who wants Yuan Qian to get married earlier. Marriage is no longer a private matter for a powerful force like Yuan Qian. After fooling Jiang Bailey, the small car arrived near the military camp. Seeing a small car with license plate number, Jing Y0001 appear, the soldier in charge of standing guard immediately straightened up. That expression was filled with awe and admiration. Hello, young marshal. Hello, young marshal. Yuan Qian rolled down the car window and saluted the soldier on guard. The small car slowly drove into the military camp, and as soon as it entered, one could see General Kai Yi leading the way, followed closely by General Wu Peifu, General Bai Chongxi, and others walking briskly towards this side. Due to Yuan Qian's temporary notice, everyone seemed somewhat caught off guard. Marshal! Marshal! From the eyes of a group of senior generals who looked at Yuan Qian, they knew how high his prestige was in their hearts. Yuan Qian took off his white gloves and nodded respectfully to everyone. Without further ado, Yuan Qian glanced at Kai Yi, Wu Peifu, Bai Chongxi, we don't like war. War causes harm to the people and wealth, and also hinders our economic development and construction, as well as improving the living standards of the people. But there are some cowardly things that don't allow us to live in peace. Yuan Qian shook his head disdainfully. We don't want to go to war, that doesn't mean we're easy to bully. Do you understand what we mean? Young Marshal, do you mean to fight? A hint of joy flashed in Bai Chongxi's eyes. The dormant tiger, if we don't shine its fangs, others will treat us like sick cats. We don't have any other requirements either. Develop a satisfactory plan and end the battle within half a month to a month. Don't hinder our construction. These dogs think that if our father passes away, they can come and eat meat and drink soup. I have to chop off the claws they reached out to grab food. Yuan Qian, who was holding the white glove in his right hand, said fiercely. Chapter 4 Using Mechanized Infantry Divisions to Give Them Things You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Although Yuan Qian has been hiding his time and developing obscenely over the years. But the size of Dashia Kingdom is there. Even so far, the Great Xia Kingdom is still in a stage of warlord warfare. But the intelligence agencies of various countries are not vegetarians either. Many pieces of evidence indicate that the economy within the Beiyang government's controlled area has experienced a rapid development. For the rapid rise of the Beiyang, the most feared are the polar bear country and the Dongyang little devils. After all, there is an old saying that goes. On the side of the bed, how can others sleep soundly? Firstly, there was the Dongyang Ziaguizi. On September 1, 1923, a strong earthquake with a magnitude of 7.9 occurred in Ziaguizi's Kanto region. The earthquake caused 150,000 deaths, over 2 million people to be homeless, and property damage of 6.5 billion Japanese yen. After the 1923 earthquake, the capital of Ziaguizi regained its vitality five years later and surpassed its pre-earthquake scale ten years later. At that time, in the Akasaka Palace, the 22.year.old regent Wang Yuren was in high spirits and holding a grand state banquet to entertain envoys from various countries. Amidst the festive banquets, the future little Japanese emperor, through his crimson wine glass, seemed to see a kingdom cooking oil on fire rising slowly in the east. But the sudden earthquake shattered its beautiful dream. It also made the little devil's emperor Yuren firm in his next steps. Then invade the great Xia kingdom. Kill all the people on the land of Daxia, and then move the easterners to a more suitable continent for survival. After the earthquake, the war entered an accelerated phase. The shock wave caused by the earthquake made these bullied and cowardly beasts vent their anger on the people of Dasya. 
These crazy devils even gave up firefighting and disaster relief, and started chasing and killing Koreans and Dashia people everywhere. If history does not change, some of the deceived people of Dasya will still donate money and goods to the Westerners under the instigation of some public intellectuals and cannon party fools. Under the banner of mountains and rivers in different regions, wind and moon in the same sky. In that era of warlord separatism and people's livelihoods, under the circumstances of compensation for the failure of the First Sino Japanese War and the gradual pressure of the Japanese invaders. Surprisingly donated $2 million to this group of hungry wolves. You should know that there were many people from Dashia who were killed by the little devils at that time. However, Yuan Qian certainly would not allow such a thing to happen. So at the first moment of the little devils earthquake, news about the little devils rampaging and harming Goryeo and Xia compatriots was frequently seen in the newspapers. The shouting of the public intellectuals has become a joke. The Siagwa didn't donate a penny to the Little Devils. Yuan Qian even took this opportunity to snatch a large number of foreign trade orders from the Little Devils. This approach has made the economy of the Little Devil even worse, causing the Emperor of the Little Devil to be extremely greedy. However, regarding the protests of the Little Devils and their Emperor, Yuan Qian stated that it was none of his own business. When dealing with one's own enemies, of course, one should drop a stone from the well. Our Lady or something. It doesn't even exist. According to the analysis of Minister of Finance Wang Yongjiang and others around Yuan Qian, due to the downfall of the Beiyang Group, the economic recovery of the Little Devils will take at least three to four more years. This has brought joy to Yuan Qian. My mood is particularly refreshing. Of course, since then, the tension between the Little Devils and the Beiyang government has deepened. Yuan Qian doesn't care about this. Anyway, the war will come sooner or later, and you Little Devil hates me so much that my teeth itch. Can't win. You can only be a dog in front of me. As for Polar Bear Country, since 1919. They changed to a new era, but it wasn't until Stalin, known as the Iron-Blooded Tsar, came to power in 1924. Their political situation has only slightly stabilized. Stalin is an ambitious guy, after the domestic situation stabilizes. He began to turn his gaze to the Asian region. After annexing some regions, the Great Xia Kingdom naturally entered his vision. In the four provinces and regions of Feng Tian, the Little Devils are also eyeing closely. Stalin is a smart person who knows he won't be able to win the four provinces of Feng Tian for a while. After all, the Feng Tian army was also quite powerful under the leadership of Zhang bandits. So Stalin turned his gaze to the western regions and grasslands. This time, the Dongyang Little Devils, Polar Bears, Feng Tian Army, and Southern Army invaded from four directions. Even ghosts can tell that they have a tacit understanding. Four ways of invasion. These damn things, how dare you think. Faced with such a dangerous situation, Yuan Qian did not panic at all. At this time, Yuan Qian demonstrated the demeanor of a great general. The artillery party said that we are not worthy of being the ruling party of the Great Xia, and they also said that the Great Xia country is not a family and does not need two Yuan surnames to be the highest rulers. They shout slogans loudly, but their heads are useless. Who said we're going to be the highest ruler of the Great Xia kingdom? Send a telegram to Duan Chirue, Feng Guizhang, and Wang Shizhen, asking the parliament to immediately elect Mr. Li Yuanhong to take office. Publicity to the outside world, let the rumors of the artillery party break through without attack. Another. General Kai led a 100,000-strong army to cross the Yangtze River and take over Jinling City and Shanghai Market, while General Wu led a 50,000-strong army to take over the three towns of Wuchang. Conduct another exercise and pull out our cannons, planes, and tanks. Let those high dot level members of the artillery faction who only know how to shout and have no ability to fart clear their minds. We still don't want to see our roommates fighting. Although the high dot level members of the artillery faction are relatively incompetent, 
their soldiers are still decent. Ultimately, it is our country's national defense force. Yuan Qian shook his head and continued, of course, a small battle is possible, but the scale should not be too large, and it should not affect the overall situation or development. If those high dot ranking members of the artillery faction are still unclear, remember one sentence. Mercy does not control soldiers, righteousness does not control wealth. Yes. Kai Yi and Wu Peifu, two fierce generals, immediately saluted. 150,000 troops. According to the reorganized Beiyang army, there were nine divisions. Each division consists of approximately 15,000 to 17,000 soldiers, each consisting of three infantry regiments. The supporting weapons of its infantry regiment are 24 heavy machine guns, 107 light machine guns, 334 submachine guns, for 120mm mortars, 681mm mortars, two 150mm infantry guns, six 75mm infantry guns The motorized division has 15,000 personnel, including two infantry regiments with three battalions each. One artillery regiment and reconnaissance, signal, engineering, two anti-aircraft artillery battalions, as well as a regular service team, with a personnel of 16,400 and 2,800 vehicles. At present, the armored tank division belongs to the ace of the trump card style, so this is not included in the required army of armored tank units. But just these armies, Yuan Qian believes they are enough to calm down the high dot ranking members of the hot-headed artillery party. If they still have a hot head, then give them physical cooling. Go get rid of the fire. After all, peace is sometimes achieved through fighting. With General Kai Yi and General Wu Peifu sitting at the helm, it is unlikely that the artillery faction will cause too much trouble. As long as it does not hinder Yuan Qian's development and strength, it does not matter if they are allowed to jump around for a few more days. In this way, the polar bear country, Dongyang country, and Feng Jun are the troubles that Yuan Qian and his subordinate Beiyang group should solve. Chapter 5 the Terrorist Strength of the Beiyang Army You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. General Kai Yi had some kind of friendship with the Southern Army, and Yuan Qian's chief father, Yuan Datu, attempted to proclaim himself emperor. This made General Kai Yi very dissatisfied and he attempted to escape the capital. Returning to the southwest region, organized the army to fight against Yuan Datu. If we continue to move forward according to the historical development trajectory, General Kai Yi is likely to pass away due to illness. However, the emergence of Yuan Qian changed all of this. After being saved by a doctor beside Yuan Qian, Yuan Datu did not choose to proclaim himself emperor after hearing Yuan Qian's mental state. Kai Yi stayed by Yuan Qian's side to assist him, especially after witnessing Yuan Qian's abilities. Kai Yi is even more loyal to Yuan Qian. As for Wu Peifu, he was already a soldier of the Beiyang army. Due to being appreciated and promoted by Yuan Qian, his promotion speed was extremely fast. It can be said to be like riding a rocket. This person is extremely grateful and loyal to Yuan Qian, which goes without saying. And its reputation in the southern army is also prominent, making it stationed in the Wuchang area. Another 50,000 troops will be dispatched to its allocation, and the southern army will not be able to withstand any storms. The Far East Army of the Polar Bear Country is restless in the grasslands, and it is said that its supreme ruler, Stalin, organized a mechanized infantry force in an attempt to take over the outer grasslands in one fell swoop. The flat and open terrain in the outer grassland area is indeed conducive to mechanized infantry combat. But our neighbor is really greedy. Thinking of the greed of the polar bear country, a hint of malice flashed in Yuan Qian's heart. About 250000 square kilometers of land west of Xing'an Mountain in Erguna River approximately 100000 square kilometers of land south and southwest of Lake Baiga Kai Island, 
Covering an area of approximately 100,000 square kilometers the area of the former Bang Hassa region is approximately 1 million square kilometers originally a land area of approximately 100,000 square kilometers belonging to the state of Bruno more than 600,000 square kilometers of land north of the Black River and south of the outer Shingen Mountains more than 400,000 square kilometers of land east of the Wusu River and the loss of all sea outlets leading to the Dongyang Sea more than 70,000 square kilometers of land west of Ili more than 10,000 square kilometers north of Zhouli Wuliangai covers a total area of over 300,000 square kilometers the outer grassland rebellion has once again resulted in the loss of over 1.5 million square kilometers of land a total of 5.8838 million square kilometers what a damn disgusting thing and now, it is the polar bear country that is once again planning to cede over 1.5 million square kilometers of land from Dacia country. Yuan Qian, who was once known as a minor ruler, appointed Su Shuzheng as his commander. Nearly 800,000 troops were deployed to the grassland areas, and he, who had always avoided war, almost supported the war with the strength of the entire Beiyang region. In the end, the 600,000-strong army of polar bear country was completely destroyed, and its commander was even captured alive. And this was also the first time that the Great Xia Kingdom defeated foreign aggression in the founding battle. Since then, Yuan Qian has appeared in the public eye as a minor ruler. Its position is more consolidated. The second five-year plan was also successfully launched after this war. This time, General Su Shuzheng is still in charge, with General Bai Chongxi, Guo Songling, and General Shuayu as assistants. Gather 500000 troops and head north to the grassland. Since Stalin is so confident, let's have a tough war with them using steel. The Beiyang army currently has an armored division of 13,000 personnel, consisting of two tank regiments, which are composed of two four-dot company, 32 tank, tank battalions. With the addition of reserve vehicles and departments at all levels, there are a total of 561 vehicles, but generally they are not fully staffed, with an average of over 320 vehicles. Most tank models are Type 1 and Type 2 light tanks, but equipped with machine guns or 20mm guns, some Type 25 tanks and a small number of Type 3 and 4 tanks. In addition, the armored division also has two fully motorized infantry regiments. Although it is impossible for all 500,000 troops to be armored divisions, with the current industrial strength and level of the Beiyang Army of the Great Xia Kingdom, its equipment naturally surpasses that of the Polar Bear Army. A collision of steel and artillery on land, the Polar Bear Country Army cannot get any advantage. In addition to armored units, the Beiyang Army of Dashia also equipped Y. 26 fighter jets and HC.26 dive bombers, which are leading in the world. The artillery unit is equipped with weapons such as the Type 24 170mm howitzer, Type 24 150mm howitzer, as well as the 128mm Y44 howitzer and 240mm Y3 howitzer. As for infantry, each Beiyang soldier carried over a hundred bullets. The rifle it is equipped with is the leading Type 25 semi-automatic rifle of this era. Combined with the Type 25 light and heavy machine gun, its team firepower has absolute suppression over the Polar Bear Army. And every soldier of the Beiyang Army was dressed in a deep blue military uniform, with extremely exquisite workmanship, and even some passionate young people were extremely enthusiastic about joining the army because of this handsome military uniform. As for helmets, soldier belts, grenades, semi-automatic rifle magazines, kettles, combat boots, triangular military spikes, pistols everything is ready. It is said that the army of the polar bear country is the most difficult to deal with in the world, and its ethnicity is a well-known fighting nation in the world. This time, Yuan Qian wanted the world to take a look. Who is the strongest and most capable fighting nation in the world? Chapter 6 Shame of the First Sino-Japanese War, Let the Devils Repay 100 Times You are listening at Novel Full.audio
General Su has been recuperating in Luoyang for so long, it seems that these polar bear people have forgotten that there is still such a tiger general in our great Xia kingdom. It's time for the fierce tiger to descend the mountain and teach some lessons to the polar bear people and those grassland ambitious individuals who are trying to rebel. Yuan Qian snorted coldly. For this giant polar bear crawling in the northern part of Great Xia country, the best approach is to dismember and decompose it. Yes. Marshal. The generals nodded and said as they heard Yuan Qian's words. The Beiyang army currently supports over 1 million troops, and has already deployed 650,000 to deal with the southern army and the polar bear army. The remaining 30,000 to 400,000 troops were used to deal with the eastern devils and the Feng Tian army. At present, the helmsman of the Feng Tian army is Zhang Dushui, who comes from a bandit background. It colluded with the Eastern Devils and became a powerful faction in the four provinces of Feng Tian in a short period of time. Later, Zhang Dushui expelled Yuan Dada's confidence and created a public opinion of serving people to govern serving. From then on, the four provinces of Feng Tian completely broke away from Yuan Dada's control, and Yuan Dada also chose to compromise with Zhang Dushui. After all, Standing behind Zhang Dushui is the Dongyang Little Devil. At present, the Little Devils are increasing their troops by 150,000 in Goryeo. With its dispatched troops stationed in Goryeo, the military strength exceeded 400000. As for the Feng Tian army's strength of 300,000. At present, Beiyang is facing the pressure of a 700,000 strong army. This is also the most powerful enemy faced by the Beiyang army. Although the polar bear country's army is strong, its focus is on Europe. In addition, the new government has only recently consolidated its power and is hostile to Western powers. So the threat from the Japanese devils is the biggest. Compared to the polar bear country army, the more powerful Dongyang little devils should be the navy. After all, the army strength of Little Devil can only rank second in the world, while the naval fleet strength is definitely at a first-class level. However, even so, Yuan Qian still doesn't have much fear, and the reason is simple. After the development of the second five-year plan, the naval strength of the Beiyang army in Dashia Kingdom was enhanced. Significant progress has also been made in terms of strength. Sea power is an important component of a country, and Yuan Qian aimed to build a strong navy. The period of the second five-year plan can be described as burning money like flowing water. That's called a ruthless one. After the second five-year plan, the Beiyang fleet had a total of eight battleships, eight aircraft carriers, 15 heavy cruisers, 20 light cruisers, 102 destroyers, and 60 submarines, with a total tonnage of over 1 million tons. Facing the crazily rising Beiyang Army Navy, although the intelligence agencies of major powers are not clear about the true strength and tonnage of the Beiyang fleet. But it attempted to limit the development of the Beiyang fleet through the Treaty of Versailles and the Treaty of Washington. However, whether it was the Treaty of Versailles or the Treaty of Washington, Yuan Qian never had the Beiyang government sign it. In Yuan Qian's eyes, the treaties spoken of by the great powers were just scraps of paper. At present, the strength of the Beiyang fleet is no less than that of the Dongyang fleet, which is known as the world's third navy. Of course. Due to Yuan Qian's foresight, the current aircraft carrier strength of Daxia is undoubtedly the world's number one. The growth of the navy and air force, as well as the excellent equipment of the army. The financial burden it brings can be imagined, which is also why Yuan Qian has not expanded his army. The reason for focusing solely on economic construction. The Feng Tian army and the Dongyang Devil's army invaded our military jurisdiction, and there were two routes. Sea and land. The land attack must be mainly carried out by the Feng Tian army. Although Zhang Bandit is not a good person, he still regards the Feng Tian four provinces as his own property. Therefore, it is absolutely not easy to let hundreds of thousands of Japanese little devils travel south by land from Feng Tian, after all, 
the reason why Jiu occupies the magpie's nest is not incomprehensible to the Zhang bandits. So the Dongyang little devils will attack our Chilu province area by sea. These arrogant little eastern devils would definitely replicate the method of the Battle of Jiawu in the past. It's just the current Beiyang fleet, not the Beiyang navy they defeated before. Yuan Qian confidently said. Order General Zhang Chukai, General Chen Xiaokuan, General Shen Honglai, and General Chen Su to lead our Beiyang navy fleet. Be ready to engage in battle with the naval fleet of the Dongyang Little Devils in the Bohai and Huanghai basins at any time. Be sure to attract the naval fleet of the Eastern Devils to the Bay of Bo and leverage the defensive fortifications built by our army on the island. Knock off the backbone of the Little Devils' navy fleet to this commander. Yuan Qian slammed his right hand hard, his eyes filled with murderous intent. In addition, our army should build defensive positions in the coastal areas of Chilu. At the same time, I personally commanded Du Lumin, Song Xilian, and Huang Baitao in cutting off the Feng Tian army and the eastward army's southward journey. Zhang Xiaozhuan is responsible for frontline command, while Jiang Bailey serves as a staff member of the Operations Staff Department to plan the upcoming battles. The unified deployment and cooperation among various units shall be ordered by the commander-in-chief. Thirty years ago, the Little Devils stood out in the Great Naval Battle. Cut off numerous islands from our country of Great Xia and compensate them with 200 million tails of silver. Thirty years later, our country of Great Xia will let this old dog go. Spit it out with interest. Yuan Qian said with a determined expression, his eyes shining. Yes. Marshal. The generals were infected by Yuan Qian's aura, and they all stood up straight and shouted loudly. Chapter 7 The Japanese Navy's God of War, Commander in Chief in Dongxiang. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Dongyang Country. Emperor Yukiko sat on the throne with an excited expression on his face, and the person sitting at the head of the throne was the Prime Minister of the Toyo Kingdom, Yashiichi Tanaka. Officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of the Army, the Ministry of the Navy, the General Staff Headquarters, the Military Order Department, the Korean Expeditionary Force, and the Guangdong Army participated. The four armies jointly launched a campaign against the Beiyang Army. This time, the little devil is determined to win. Full of confidence. Your Majesty, this is the global warfare strategy formulated by me and the military staff. Your Majesty, please take a look. After speaking, Yashiichi Tanaka, as the Prime Minister of Toyo, sat up from his seat. Holding a memorial in hand. Tanaka Yashiichi knelt down on the ground. The personal guards presented the memorial to Emperor Yuren of the Eastern Kingdom. Emperor Yuren took the memorial and a row of Chinese characters caught his eye. I have enormous and significant rights and interests in Manchuria and Mongolia. Therefore, the governance of successive cabinets in Manchuria and Mongolia followed the teachings of Emperor Meiji, expanded their scale, and completed the New World Policy. Dot. The war between the Eastern Ocean and the Polar Bear Country was actually the Battle of Japan. If we want to control in the future, we must first defeat the Bald Hawk Power, which is similar to the meaning of the war between Toyang and Polar Bears. If you want to conquer, you must first conquer Manchuria and Mongolia. If you want to conquer the world, you must first conquer. If is completely conquered by our country, other nationalities with different costumes, such as small and medium-sized Asia, India, Southeast Asia, etc., will fear me to respect me and fall to me. This time, the four armies attacked the Beiyang army. The little devils are not only seeking to seize Chilu province, but their goal is to take down Fengxi province in one fell swoop. And using the four provinces of Feng Tian as a springboard to seize the entire Dashia kingdom. Yoshi. Yoshi. Tanaka, your memorial. I like it, I really like it. The little devilish Emperor Yuren nodded excitedly after reading the contents of the memorial. The land of Dongyang is narrow and resources are extremely scarce. 
and frequent volcanic earthquakes. Since the great earthquake occurred in the capital of Little Devil, his ambition towards the great Xia kingdom has become even more like that of Sima Zhao, which is well dot known to everyone. Now, when it was time for the Little Devils to gamble on national luck again, Emperor Yuren saw this memorial. In my heart, I am ecstatic and as if I have found a treasure. Seeing how much the little Japanese emperor liked it, Tanaka Yashiichi, as the prime minister of the Eastern Cabinet, once again spoke up. Your Majesty. The four major armies are attacking Beiyang, and this battle will surely defeat the Beiyang army. After defeating the Beiyang army, our army can directly capture the four provinces of Fengtian. And use this as a springboard to conquer the entire Great Xia country. Therefore, this battle is actually a gamble on the national fortune of our Eastern Empire. In this battle, it is necessary to dispatch an experienced and steadfast general as the commander to ensure that everything is foolproof. Upon hearing Tanaka Yashiichi's words, Emperor Yoshimoto nodded. Yoshi. Tanaka Jun, you're right. It's not easy to choose a prestigious and mature general. Emperor Yuren's words fell, and a little devil stood out from among the little devils from the east. The person knelt down to Emperor Yuren and said, Your Majesty, I am willing to go. As soon as that person appeared, everyone, without exception, showed a happy expression. The reason for this reaction. Naturally, it is because this person is extraordinary. That's right, this person is the naval god of the little devils and the marshal of the Dongyang navy. Dongxiang Pingbalang. This person served as the captain of the cruiser Langsu before the outbreak of the First Sino-Japanese War. Due to his outstanding performance in the First Sino-Japanese War, Dongxiang Pingbalang was appointed as a rear admiral of the navy. Later, he led his fleet to participate in the eight-nation invasion of Xia. And in the war between Toyo and Polar Bear, he established the title of Navy God of War in one fell swoop. Due to leading the Eastern Navy to defeat the Polar Bear Navy in the Battle of the Malacca Strait, he earned the reputation of Eastern Nelson. Due to his sharing the same domain as Dashin Yen, he was praised as the land, mountains, and sea of Dongxiang at that time. The Battle of Jiawu The Luku Massacre the hands of this old beast are also stained with the blood of ordinary people in the great Xia kingdom. The appearance of Dongxiang Pingbalang brightened the eyes of officials from all over the country. Isn't this the best candidate? Not only Hiraburo Dongxiang, but also the veteran generals who participated in the First Sino-Japanese War and the wars between Toyo and Polar Bear countries have stepped forward one after another. Enthusiastic Bidding Seeing so many veteran generals fighting, the little devil Emperor Yuren was naturally excited. Yoshi. Yoshi. You are the pillars of our country, with you here. The heavenly illumination God will forever bless our great eastern empire. My great eastern empire will surely prosper in martial arts. Drink, drink. The little devil's Emperor Wanren and his ministers burst out laughing with excitement. At this time, the Japanese emperor and his ministers were unaware. This decision unexpectedly reached Yuan Qian's ears as quickly as possible. Yuan Qian has played a crucial role in the espionage network layout of the Eastern Kingdom for so many years. Ha, ha. Good news, good news. That's really good news, that's great. These old dogs, surprisingly, took the initiative to come knocking on their door. It said that a gentleman seeks revenge, it's not too late for ten years. This time, Ben Shui must have ended this group of old dogs in one pot. To pay tribute to the heroic souls who died for their country in the First Sino-Japanese War. Yuan Qian, who was so excited and embarrassed at the moment, was the first time Jiang Bailey, as the chief of staff, had seen him. Chapter 8 an excellent opportunity for the heroes of Jiawu to revenge. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Marshall. What's going on, so happy? At this moment, Jiang Bailey didn't know what had happened. He looked at Yuan Qian strangely. Good thing. 
Yuan Qian smiled and then handed the confidential intelligence to Jiang Bailey. As the chief of the general staff of the Beiyang army and holding the rank of general, Jiang Bailey was naturally qualified to access intelligence at this level. Besides, Dongxiang Pingbolang and other people are once again leading the army, which cannot be considered as anything too confidential. Jiang Bailey received the intelligence handed over by Yuan Qian, and only then did he understand why the marshal was so happy. Dongxiang Pingbolang and the names that appeared on the intelligence documents, without exception, were all those who had participated in the Battle of Jiawu. And with his meritorious service in the Battle of Jiawu, he gradually rose to become a high dot ranking general in the Japanese Navy. This time, the little devil gambled on national luck and attempted to defeat the Beiyang army in one fell swoop. They sent out all their veteran generals, and this also made Yuan Qian, who had already hated these old beasts so much, overjoyed. Defeating and killing other small devils and generals is not as enjoyable as tidying up these old beasts. You should know that these old beasts are all stained with the blood of heroes of the great Xia kingdom. This time. They must die, not a single one can be spared. Thirty years. If we miss this opportunity, perhaps we will never have a chance to kill these old beasts again. Yuan Qian almost gritted his teeth and said to Jiang Bailey. Whether it's a parallel world or the current world. Whenever Yuan Qian reads about the history of the First Sino-Japanese War, he always feels his heart ache in waves. That bone-wrenching sense of humiliation, the towering hatred of wanting to slaughter the little Japanese navy fleet. As a native of the Great Xia, Yuan Qian always dreamed of avenging the heroes who sacrificed their lives for their country in the Battle of Jiawu. Ding Nucheng, Deng Shichang, Lu Buchan, Lin Taizeng, Yang Yonglin these heroes who sacrificed their lives for this country and nation. They used their young lives to protect this country. During the Battle of Jiawu, while someone was busy celebrating their birthday and repairing their garden. All the naval commanders and soldiers of the Beiyang fleet could only use shells mixed with sand to bombard the Japanese navy ships. Nevertheless, none of them gave up fighting. When a warship sinks or can no longer command the enemy, these heroes almost always commit suicide. Every time he thought of this, Yuan Qian's eyes turned red. At that time, the warship Jinyuan, led by Lin Taizeng, the commander of the Jinyuan, accidentally hit a mine before the naval battle. Tai Zeng, who believed he had no face to face his comrades and his compatriots, committed suicide that night. Yang Yonglin, the acting captain of the Zhenyuan ship, was defeated in the Battle of Jiawu on February 1st. Yang Yonglin was distressed that the entire situation had passed, and he could no longer command the repaired warship to fight against the little devils. So Yang used Lin Ko to recite the famous patriotic poem by the patriotic general Wen Tianxiang of the Southern Song Dynasty. Who has never died in life since ancient times, keep a loyal heart to reflect history. Immediately drank a bullet and committed suicide. In the Battle of Weihai, the Beiyang fleet resisted the encirclement of the Eastern Navy. At the time of running out of ammunition and food, Ding Nucheng, the commander of the Beiyang Navy, refused to surrender to the little devils of the Dongyang kingdom. Finally, he chose to take poison and commit suicide for his country. I'm only 59 years old. In the situation where the overall situation of the Battle of Weihai has been determined. Fearing that the Dingyuan ship would fall into the hands of the enemy, Ding Nucheng and Lu Buchan decided to scatter the Dingyuan ship. That night, Lu Buchan followed his beloved ship and committed suicide for his country. He fulfilled his vow of sacrificing his own life, at the age of 43. There was also Deng Shichang who sailed and collided with the warship Yoshino of the Japanese slave country. After falling into the sea, his attendants wanted to use a life buoy to rescue him, but were directly refused by Deng Shichang. I aspire to kill the enemy and serve the country, but now I die by the sea, Yoshia. Why seek survival? Deng Shichang's beloved dog swam to his side, holding his arm and trying to save him. However, Deng Shichang swore to coexist with the warship, so he resolutely entered the water with the dog's head. 
He, along with more than 250 officers and soldiers on board, died a heroic death for the country. If you want to lose a ship, you must cut yourself off. The Beiyang Navy was completely defeated in the Battle of Jiawu. The hero may die, but this revenge. Yuan Qian has taken note. There are those bastards from the previous dynasty, as well as those old beasts from the Japanese Navy. During Yuan Qian's actual tenure as a minor ruler. The former imperial family, who had the right to preferential treatment and harbored ill intentions, was sent to the mining site by Yuan Qian. Digging coal day and night. At present, the vast majority of former imperial families have died from exhaustion and collapse. As for the former royal family and officials who were greedy for military expenses during the Battle of Jiawu, they were all executed by Yuan Qian without exception. Those heroes are bleeding and sacrificing their lives on the front line, while the rats behind them who amassed wealth and made a difficult fortune for the country all died unsightly. Even someone's tomb has been excavated, and burial objects inside have been dug out. Its bones were even hung and trampled upon. Throw it into the garbage dump and be picked up by the dog. Cruel humiliation. This is Yuan Qian's first revenge for the heroic soul sacrificed in the Battle of Jiawu. And next. Dongxiang Pingbalang and those who participated in the Battle of Jiawu and arrogantly mocked the people of Daxia as the sick men of East Asia. It's the second revenge to seek. Give this document to General Sa Zhen, an advisor to the Navy Staff Department. I think he will be interested. Tell him. The opportunity for revenge has arrived. Yuan Qian said to Chief of Staff Jiang Bailey. Yes, Marshal. Jiang Bailey immediately saluted Yuan Qian. Chapter 9 The Gathering of Stars from the East and West, Bringing the Germanic. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Sa Jinbing, with ancestral roots in Dai County, Shangxi Province, is a famous member of the Sa family of the Simu people. He was once sent to the Empire of Sunset to study the Navy. After returning to China, he served as a teacher at the Jinmen Naval Academy, the commander of the Beiyang Naval Corps and the commander of the Haiki Fleet, the supervisor of the Guangdong Eastern Naval Corps, and the commander of the former Navy. Later hired as an advisor to the Navy Staff Department. In the Battle of Jiawu, the Sazan soldiers participated in a decisive battle with the Little Devil's fleet on the sea. Many of his friends also sacrificed their lives for their country in the Battle of Jiawu. This is also why Yuan Qian said that General Sa Jinbing would definitely be very excited. As expected by Yuan Qian, the soldiers of Sazan received this news. Excited hands trembling. Tears welled up in my eyes. He has been waiting for this day for too long. Tell the marshal. In this battle, if we need the old bone of Sa Jinbing, dot. I'm willing to do anything. Shattering hands tightly grasped Jiang Bailey's hand, and Sa Jinbing said with tears in his eyes. Jiang Bailey also fully understood the excitement of the soldiers in Sazen. Jiang Bailey patted the hand of the Sa Jinbing and said, General Sa. The young commander only said one sentence. Let General Sa board the Shenlong aircraft carrier with the flag of the Beiyang Navy, and let those souls of the Beiyang Navy who died in battle take a look. Today's magnificent summer is no longer a great country that can be bullied and destroyed by the Japanese slaves of the three islands. General Sa. Can you complete the instructions from the commander? Jiang Bailey said as he looked into the eyes of the soldiers in Sa Town. Ensure completion of the task. If my old friends could see this scene, they would surely close their eyes. Sa Jinbing saluted Jiang Bailey and said. The Southern Army's Northern Expedition. The Polar Bear Army is heading straight into and coveting the outer grasslands. The Fong Tian Army and the Japanese Guangdong Army marched south along the railway with the intention of overthrowing the Beiyang government. The Little Devil's Navy fleet set sail from the local port of Toyo and Inchon in Goryeo, attempting to land on Qin Island in the province of Chilu in Daxia. For a moment. The Beiyang government of the Great Xia Kingdom controls the surrounding area, 
with a tendency to catch fire everywhere. Faced with this situation, Yuan Qian had no intention of admitting guilt. During this period, he even had leisure time to go to the airport and pick up some visiting officers from his close friend country, the German Empire. Due to the suppression of the German Empire by the Treaty of Versailles, its army suffered a large dot scale downsizing. In order to preserve the seeds of excellent military officers in their country, a large number of outstanding officers were sent to serve as military advisors domestically. Alternatively, they can directly evade treaty restrictions in the form of exchange students from military academies. The reason why Yuan Qian warmly greeted this group of officers this time is also very simple. These officers are very impressive. Like Manstein, Guderian, Rommel, Motor, Cardinitz, Albert Kessel in this time, the German Imperial Officer Corps was able to dispatch an extremely luxurious lineup. With the secret support of Yuan Qian, in November 1923, Little Beard successfully launched the Beer House Incident. The cooperation between the Germanic Empire and the Beiyang Group entered a honeymoon period. Nowadays, these Germanic Empire officers come to visit the Kingdom of Great Xiao, in addition to observing the battles in the Kingdom of Great Xiao. It also attempted to purchase some advanced weapons and equipment from the Great Xia Kingdom. Little Beard also mentioned that if possible, he would attack Polar Bear Country from the Western Front, which would alleviate the pressure on the Beiyang Group. Its goal is already very clear. It is an attempt to form an alliance with the Beiyang Group, or rather with Yuan Qian. And for this, Yuan Qian doesn't mind. General. General. After seeing Yuan Qian, such as Manchitanin, Guderian, Rommel, Motor, Karl Dunitz, Albert Kesselin, and others, everyone stood up and saluted Yuan Qian. At this moment, they were not yet the renowned generals of the Germanic Empire in the parallel world. Faced with Yuan Qian, who even the young bearded man who had just taken over power, was extremely admired and admired. They couldn't help but appear a bit nervous. Sit down. Yuan Qian waved to everyone with a smile. The Germanic Empire officers, such as Manchitanin, Guderian, Rommel, Motor, Cardinitz, Albert Kesselin, and others, sat down. And other officers from the Beiyang group who followed Yuan Qian also sat on chairs. Like Manchitanin, these officers were also the backbone of the Beiyang army. The pillar of the future. Wang Yaowu, Hu Lian, Guan Qizheng, Yu Jishi, Chen Mingren, Li Yutang, Huang Meixin, Huang Jia, Dai Anlin, Wang Jingzhou, Zheng Zisheng, Xie Jinyuan, Jing Dong Dong, Li Mon, Zhang Lingfu, Li Xianzhou, Fan Hanjia, Chiu Qingchuan, Liao Yao Xiang. The reason why they came here too is not because there are too many generals under Yuan Qian's leadership. There's no place to go. But Yuan Qian wanted them to learn from top generals from the German Empire. Meanwhile, gathering so many stars together. It is also Yuan Qian's next intention to use the grassland area to engage in war with the polar bear country. Thoroughly shake this large group of generals and show them what this era is. Real top dot level tactics. And in the future, this tactic will also become a lightning battle that German Empire soldiers are proud of. Having a fateful duel. Chapter 10 Breaking the Mystery of Blitzkrieg, Shocking the Japanese Ears. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. In the military conference room, there is a huge sand table placed, which marks the terrain of the grasslands outside of Great Xiao. The outer grassland area includes areas that are still nominally controlled by the Beiyang Group as well as the Tongnu Wuliang Sea area that was encroached upon by the Polar Bear Country in 1914. Its total area is approximately 1.8 million square kilometers. This time, the Polar Bear Country has increased its troops by 200,000 in the grassland area. Plus its nearly 500,000 strong army previously stationed in the Far East region. The military strength has reached over 700,000. In order to take over the grasslands outside of the Great Xia Kingdom in one fell swoop, the highest consul of the Polar Bear Kingdom, Stalin, even dispatched his ace general. To 
Tukashkivsky. Tukhachevsky graduated from the Alexander Military Academy and was one of the five future marshals of the Polar Bear Country, earning the title of Napoleon of the Red Army. Although this person may not hold the highest position, their commanding ability has always been recognized as the best. Later, the god of war of the polar bears, Zhukov, commented on Tukhachevsky, he was a great military thinker and a brilliant star among the excellent commanders of the polar bears army. Let this person take the lead. It is enough to show that Stalin, the highest ruler of the polar bear country, has a strong influence on the grasslands of the great Xia country. Aspiring to win. Speaking of which, General Tukashkovsky had previously come from a noble family in the Polar Bear Kingdom. Later on, he was appreciated by his former Polar Bear Country steel giant and mentor. Even in World War I, this person was imprisoned in the same prison as the later highest ruler of Gaul and the last man of Gaul, Charles de Gaulle. The two of them worked together to study the most advanced military theories and how to escape from prisoner of war camps. After returning to China, Tukhachevsky became the founder of the Great Deep Strategy, which was equivalent to the defense theory proposed by Mr. Jiang Bailey, and the polar bear country's victory in World War II was closely related to this theory. Compared to Mr. Jiang Bailey, Tukhachevsky has commanded actual warfare. Afterwards, Tukhachevsky vigorously promoted the modernization of the polar bear country's army. Due to his active advocacy, from the late 1920s to the early 1930s, new branches and services such as the Air Force, Motorized Mechanized Forces, Airborne Troops, and Navy of Polar Bear Country were established one after another. The original infantry and artillery also experienced rapid development during this period. The T.34 tank and jet engine of Polar Bear Country were also strongly developed by Tukhachevsky. Tukhachevsky is an expert in tanks, who truly achieved the mechanization and motorization of the Polar Bear Army. However, there is an irreconcilable conflict between Tukhachevsky and Stalin, the current highest ruler of the Polar Bear State. Can make people like Stalin let go of the idea of having different political views, and let Tukhachevsky lead over 700,000 troops from the Far East. Launch an attack on the Great Xia Kingdom from the Outer Grasslands. It is evident that Stalin valued this battle. Of course, iron-blooded figures like Stalin. Of course, he knew that under Yuan Qian's restructuring, the strength of the Beiyang army was already different from before. Stalin's actions may not have followed the example of Emperor Yang Guang of Sui in the Great Xia Dynasty. Consume the strength of his opponents. In summary, regardless of what Stalin, the highest executive of the polar bear country, thinks. The real army of 700,000 appeared in the outer grassland area. And the commander of this army is also the most outstanding general of the polar bear country, Tikhoshkovsky. The polar bear country has gathered 700,000 troops to march south, attempting to take over the grasslands outside of the Great Xia country in one fell swoop. And cooperate with the Feng Tian and Dongyang armies. Threaten the capital of our Great Xia kingdom and destroy our Beiyang government. Ambitious. Yuan Qian smiled and said to everyone present. Tukhachevsky is a genius general of the polar bear country, possessing the ability to win and conquer all battles. He has a deep research on armor and mechanized infantry. This person is skilled at utilizing advanced tactical concepts such as depth assault, flank flanking, and dynamic defense, concentrating superior forces to quickly break through weak links and defeat opponents with a lightning-fast approach. In the previous Polar Bear National War, Tukhachevsky defeated the powerful Gorchak army at a weak cost in just half a month, making him a genius military strategist. Blitzkrieg I think this is a tactical theory that your military academy and the Germanic Empire are promoting. Your lightning warfare tactics make full use of the fast advantages of airplanes, tanks, and mechanized troops, and use sudden attacks to defeat the enemy and achieve the expected results by quickly cutting through the enemy's main force with mechanized troops. Its core elements are Speed, Surprise, and Concentration 
Blitzkrieg fully utilizes the speed advantage of modern warfare tools such as airplanes, tanks, armored vehicles, and motorcycles, and delivers lightning-like strikes on the enemy at a speed that exceeds the opponent's response. Genius thinking is always common, if Tukashkovsky doesn't die. It will definitely be your great enemy of the Germanic Empire. Yuan Qin casually revealed the mystery of the Germanic Empire's Blitzkrieg, startling the officers who came from the Germanic Empire. Including Manstein, Guderian, Rommel, Motor, Cardinitz, Albert Kesselin. Stunned. They looked at the young Xia Guo commander in front of them with shocked eyes. Yuan Qin, for a moment unsure of what kind of reaction to make. 